Chapter 7. The Times of the Gentiles. The Times of the Gentiles and their fulfillment has been the subject of curiosity and speculation for many years. Christ referred to this particular time when he said, And they, the Jews, shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Luke 21 24. There is a variety of opinion as to the fulfillment of the times of the Gentiles. Some think that it was accomplished when the Jews were scattered, 70 AD, others think it was fulfilled at the time of the restoration of the gospel, and still others indicate that it has not yet occurred. The quotations included in this chapter should shed considerable light upon this subject. Doctrine and Covenants And this I have told you concerning Jerusalem, and when that day shall come, shall a remnant be scattered among all nations, but they shall be gathered again, but they shall remain until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And in that day shall be heard of wars and rumors of wars, and the whole earth shall be in commotion, and men's hearts shall fail them, and they shall say that Christ delayeth his coming until the end of the earth. And the love of men shall wax cold, and iniquity shall abound. And when the times of the Gentiles is come in, a light shall break forth among them that sit in darkness, and it shall be the fullness of my gospel. But they receive it not, for they perceive not the light, and they turn their hearts from me because of the precepts of men. And in that generation shall the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be men standing in that generation, that shall not pass until they shall see an overflowing scourge, for a desolating sickness shall cover the land. Sec. 45 24-31. Hebrews C. Kimball. The judgments of God will be poured out upon the wicked to the extent that our elders from far and near will be called home. Or, in other words, the gospel will be taken from the Gentiles, and later on will be carried to the Jews. Then the prophet Joseph and others will make their appearance, and those who have remained faithful will be selected to return to Jackson County, Missouri, and take part in the upbuilding of that beautiful city, the New Jerusalem. Amanda Wilcox Record, BYU. Orson Pratt. If you will read the revelations given in 1833, you will find in them a promise made, when the time should arrive for this gospel to be sent to the house of Israel. If you will read another revelation given on the seventh day of March 1831, you will there learn also concerning the fulfillment of the times of the Gentiles. I wish to say a few words upon two subjects. First, the times of the Gentiles being come in, and second, their times being fulfilled, and the sending of the gospel to the house of Israel. In a revelation, given in March, 1831, 24 years ago, to the prophet Joseph, concerning what Jesus said to the apostles at Jerusalem, in regard to the last days, and the day of their redemption, etc. Jesus said to his apostles, When that day shall come, and the light shall begin to break forth among them that sit in darkness, when the fullness of my gospel shall begin to break forth, that is the period when the time of the Gentiles shall come in. Mark the expression. When the light shall begin to break forth, then at that period the time of the Gentiles shall have come in, and in that generation the times of the Gentiles shall be fulfilled. Here then, we perceive the two distinctions, when the light begins to break forth, that is, when the Book of Mormon is translated, when the church is organized, these events bring in the time of the Gentiles, and in the generation that the light breaks forth the times of the Gentiles shall be fulfilled. We are also told in the same revelation that the Jews who were to be scattered from old Jerusalem, should remain scattered, until the times of the Gentiles should be fulfilled. Consequently, this is the reason why the Jews have not gathered since the rise of this church. If they were gathered together if they had assembled at old Jerusalem, it would have contradicted the prophecies and revelations God has given on this subject. They are to remain scattered, said the Lord, until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled, and their times are to be fulfilled in the generation that their time comes in, or when the light of the fullness of the gospel begins to break forth. Another revelation upon this subject says that after the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled, the servants of God should be sent forth to Israel. What shall then take place? Behold, then cometh the day of my power. Then when the servants of God turn from the Gentile nations, and shall go forth by commandment of the Almighty, being sent by his church, the voice of his people, and the Holy Spirit, unto the nations of Israel, then cometh the day of my power, saith the Lord. What kind of power? He goes on to tell us that it should come to pass, that the tribes and nations of Joseph should hear the gospel in their own tongue, and in their own language, through those who are sent forth and ordained unto this power, through the gift of the Holy Ghost shed forth upon them, through the revelations of Jesus Christ. But inquire the people, do you believe that the times of the Gentiles are they fulfilled yet? No, they are not fulfilled yet. Hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of the Gentiles among the various nations of the earth will yet bow to the fullness of the gospel, and they will come, and the gates of Zion will not be shut day nor night, that the forces of the Gentiles may flow unto her. The Lord will continue to work among both Israel and Gentiles, and his power will increase, the more we send the gospel among Israel, the more the servants of God seek for the seed of Jacob, the more will the powers of heaven be displaced for the redemption of the people. JD 2 261-263. Orson Pratt. Before this great message for the redemption and salvation of the Jewish nation can ever go forth, there is a certain work to be performed on the earth, certain purposes to be fulfilled, and until that is fulfilled and accomplished, Jerusalem can never be rebuilt, and the Jews can never return as a nation. 
a decree has gone forth by the mouth of the Son of God himself, that that city should be in the possession of the Gentiles, and that it should be trodden down by them, and that the Jews should be scattered among the nations, until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Who, among all the inhabitants of the earth, can tell us how the Lord will bring about the fulfillment of this prediction in regard to the Gentiles? Who is able to declare when the times of the Gentiles will be fulfilled? Who knows anything about it, unless it be revealed from heaven? We might pore over the pages of the Bible, understand many of the prophecies that have been fulfilled, and be able to treasure up in our hearts and commit to memory all the predictions of the prophets, and yet, without new revelation, no person would be able to decide when the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. It may not be amiss to declare, in a very few the belief of the Latter-day Saints, in regard to the fulfilling of the times of the Gentiles, that is, when we understand by the fulfilling of their times. We believe, as was said this morning, that before the times of the Gentiles can possibly be fulfilled, a proclamation must come from heaven and be sounded in their ears namely, that an angel must come from heaven and bring the everlasting gospel, not for the Jews, the descendants of Israel, alone, but for every nation, kindred, tongue and people. Gentiles and Jews, all must hear it, for the prediction is that when the angel comes forth with that message from heaven, it is to be preached to all nations, kindreds, tongues and people. This, of course, includes Gentiles as well as Jews. We cannot, therefore, suppose that the times of the Gentiles will be fulfilled until after that event takes place. When the angel comes, when the servants of God are sent forth by divine authority with a proclamation, and have fulfilled that prediction by declaring the everlasting gospel to all the nations and kingdoms of the Gentiles, then their times will be fulfilled, and not before. What would be the use of sending the gospel to the Gentiles if their times were fulfilled, and there was no hope or chance for them to receive salvation? The very declaration that an angel shall come forth with the gospel in the latter days before the destruction of the wicked, and that that gospel is to be preached to Gentiles as well as Jews, is proof and evidence to every reflecting mind that believes the Bible that the Gentiles will have an opportunity, until that message is delivered and the prediction concerning it fulfilled. When that is done, the law is bound, the testimony is sealed, so far as they are concerned. How many more years will pass over our heads that we will have the privilege of declaring the fullness of the everlasting gospel among the nations of the Gentiles is not revealed. All that we know on the subject is what the Lord told us some forty years ago, that the times of the Gentiles would be fulfilled in the generation in which he established his church, that is, that before the generation living forty years ago have all passed away the times of the Gentiles will be fulfilled. And what then? The prediction of Isaiah, in another place, will be literally fulfilled the law will be bound up, and the testimony sealed so far as sending the gospel to the Gentile nations is concerned. What will be the next work to be performed? The Jews will then come in remembrance before the Lord. That is, the set time for their deliverance and restoration will have come, the period predicted by the mouth of the ancient prophet, in which the gospel shall be proclaimed to them. This will be when the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled, and you elders of Zion are sent to the house of Israel. You will go in the Lord's power, and so great will be that power that you will have influence over them. You will tell them that their warfare is accomplished, that their iniquity is pardoned, and that they have received at the Lord's hand double for all their sin, and the Lord will bear witness of this by his mighty power, with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm will the Lord do this, and with fury poured out. Poured out upon whom? Upon all the nations and kingdoms of the Gentiles who will not receive the truth, their times being fulfilled. It will be expressly the day of the Lord's judgment, or, in other words, the hour of the Lord's judgment, that is spoken of in the twenty-fourth chapter of Revelations, when the angel brings the gospel. J.D. 1461, 62, 65. Orson Pratt. After the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled, which period is set in the mind of God, another scene will open up before the world, in the grand panorama of the last days. What is that? The downfall of the Gentile nations. Says one whom do you call Gentiles? Every nation excepting the literal descendants of Israel. We, the Latter-day Saints, are Gentiles, in other words, we have come from among the Gentile nations, though many of us may have the blood of Israel within our veins. When God has called out the righteous, when the warning voice has been sufficiently proclaimed among these Gentile nations, and the Lord says it is enough, he will also say to his servants, O, ye, my servants, come home, come out from the midst of these Gentile nations, where you have labored and borne testimony for so long a period, come out from among them, for they are not worthy. They do not receive the message that I have sent forth, they do not repent of their sins, come out from their midst, their times are fulfilled. Seal up the testimony among them and bind up the law. What then? Then the word of the Lord will be, O, oh, ye, my servants, I have a new commission for you. Instead of going forth to convert the Gentile nations, go unto the remnants of the house of Israel, that are scattered in the four quarters of the earth. Go and proclaim to them that the times of their dispersion are accomplished, that the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled, that the time has arrived for my people Israel, who have been scattered for generations in a dark and cloudy day, to gather unto their own homes again, and to build up old Jerusalem on its former heap. And then will commence the gathering of the Jews to old Jerusalem, then the ten tribes in the northern regions, wherever they may be, after having been concealed from the nations for twenty-five hundred years, will come forth and will return, as Jeremiah has said, from the north country. 
JD 1864. Orson Pratt. Then, when the Gentile nations shall reject this gospel, and count themselves unworthy of eternal life, as the Jews did before them, the Lord will say it is enough, come away from them, my servants, I will give you a new commission, you shall go to the scattered remnants of the house of Israel. I will gather them in from the four quarters of the earth, and bring them again into their own lands. They shall build Jerusalem on its own heap, they shall rear a temple on the appointed place in Palestine, and they shall be grafted in again. Now that, in short, is the nature of this great latter-day preparatory work for the coming of the Son of Man. J.D. 18177. Orson Pratt. Having established his kingdom, he offers it first to these Gentile nations, if they will receive it, and when they shall count themselves unworthy of the kingdom, unworthy of eternal life, unworthy of the message which God has sent to them, and shall persecute his servants and his people all the day long, and shall close up their sanctuaries, their churches, their chapels their meeting houses, and their places of worship against this message, and when it can no longer find place among them, so as to bring them to a knowledge and understanding of the truth, the Lord will, after a while, designate by revelation, and say unto his servants, It is enough. You have been faithful in laboring in my vineyard, for the last time for it was the decree of heaven, that this shall be the last time, that you will labor in his vineyard. It is the eleventh hour, the last warning that will be given to the nations of the earth, first to the Gentiles, and then to the house of Israel. J.D. 2146. Parley P. Pratt. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and they shall be led away captive among all nations, and Jerusalem what will become of it finally, shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until that is a big word, and means much in the position it occupies here in Tillon, that word is suspended that nation's fate, and the fate of all the neighboring nations Jerusalem, shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. I tell you there is meaning in these words, contained in that single line. O ye nations of the earth, if I had the voice of an angel's trump, that I could be heard to earth's remotest bounds, by kings, rulers, captains, generals, armies, and nations, I would wish to read that one line in their ears, and tell them the things that were summed up in it. Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. What is meant by it? One thing we know certain, we have no need to conjecture, that is, that all these things happen literally. The Roman army on the outside, and the three factions on the inside of the city of Jerusalem, and the famine, and the pestilence helping it on, performed their work until finally it came to an end by the city being taken by the Romans, the temple set on fire and burned, and the whole city desolated, and brought under Gentile rule, namely, Roman rule. And it is said, in the history written by Josephus, that one million and a half of Jews perished in that siege, that is, in that one city, in putting an end to a national polity, a national corrupted form of government, a national priesthood, a national house of worship. One million and a half perished. They fell by the edge of the sword, by pestilence, and by famine, and the remnants of the Jews were carried captive among all nations. To remain how long? As I have said, we know this prophecy has been literally fulfilled, for we see them scattered among all nations to this day. Now there was a time allotted for the Gentile powers to reign, for their corruptions to bear rule, and during the time here designated as the times of the Gentiles, the times of their polity, of their nationality, their religion, and to prove them, and to see what they would do with the power committed unto them the times spoken of by Daniel the prophet, in which the fourth monarchy, namely, the Roman, and all those divisions and subdivisions that should grow out of it in modern times, the times when these divided powers should bear rule. There is just as much a time for these to have their day and prove themselves, and bring forth the fruits of their rule, and a time for them to come to an end, as ever there was a time for Jerusalem to rule or for the Jewish polity to come to an end. Now when that time arrives, ye nations look out, for there is a prophecy gone forth about you, it is in these words, and recorded in the Old Testament. Though I make a full end of all nations where I have scattered you, yet will I not make a full end of you speaking of Israel. Now, when the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled, there will be an uprooting of their governments and institutions, and of their civil, political, and religious polity. There will be a shaking of nations, a downfall of empires, an upturning of thrones and dominions, as Daniel has foretold, and the kingdom in power, and rule on the earth will return to another people, and exist under another polity, as Daniel has further foretold. But let me read it here, let Jesus speak in his own words, or the writer for him. Now understand that we have got down to the present time, that is sure with this prophecy, no man can mistake it. Jerusalem has been overthrown, and not one stone of that magnificent temple has been left upon another. A great portion of that nation fell by the edge of the sword, and the residue went captive among all nations, and their city has been trodden under foot of the Gentiles, and will be until their times are fulfilled, that is, until they have had their reign out. JD 3 134-135